All right, there I'm back. Um, I'm going to be kicking off a print now. I'm going to try and do this quickly um, to have like no wasted time. But um, I've already loaded my um, filament into the printer, which was in the last video. So it's all ready to go. The filament is here sticking out the end of the tube because obviously it can't go in because the coupler's mounted. So now all you'll do is get the material and um, you would just roll it back manually so it's like up here but you've already pre-sharpened it so it's ready to come out when you're going to be going into the next stage because this whole process has to be done very quickly because it's heat dependent so um, you would go into advanced settings what's this rubbish maintenance and then you would go to heat up nozzle and just heat the nozzle up to about you know the usual 260 because you're going to do a retraction or you're going to move the material because you need to get the material back up there to get it back in there because you can't have the tube connected because as the filament goes into the coupler because the coupler is warped at the top it doesn't feed into the hole correctly and therefore just gets jammed and that is a kind of a result of a, like a null print you know it starts the printer head will move and nothing will come out and it's also the case when you're changing the material you'll eject it but because you've got a lump of plastic that gets melted um, around the coupler and the coupler is slightly bent as it's pulling out the head has that lump kind of stuck to it and that lump will generally get stuck in the Bowden tube at the connector which is why again you saw in the first video it wouldn't eject but well there you have it anyway we're on 200 degrees now so I'm just going to move the material back now this is something that you have to be quick because unfortunately on the ultimate settings every time you click move material the heat that you set already goes back to the default heat for the material so because that's PLA this will go back to 210 all the time as soon as I click back to move material so um, you'll see it here anyway move material and then you roll it back here hopefully you can see that in the video the material is going back into the tube I mean it does need to go miles away but still get it back in so you can actually physically watch it with your eye going in all right the tubes now back in um, I'm gonna basically as you can also already see the temperature dropping down here I don't know hopefully if the camera's in focus but the, the temperature is already going down all right that's on to whatever all right going back so now what you have to do, click to return, is you have to go to heat up nozzle and whack it up to two f a really high temperature again to 260. So once it hits 260, what you have to do, I'm going to tell you now because I'm going to have to do it very quickly, is have your bed already prepped, ready to print on because um, you're not going to have time to set it up, you should have set that up before but again I can post another video how to set that up so everything's ready to go right now and as soon as that hits to whatever 40 I'm going to start lowering the material and as soon as I see it coming out I'm basically going to hit print immediately but what I've also forgotten to quickly do now is heat up the build, the build plate so I'm, I actually should have done that because that takes time as well so I just put it on 70 because I like it to have it ni nice and warm. Luckily, when you're on this mode, the temperature of the nozzle actually does stay. So right now, the nozzle is going to be 260, even while I'm messing around with these settings. So um, I'm going to do an edit, and this is going to be magically 70 degrees in a minute, and then I'm just going to kick the print off. All right, we're on 70 now. Um, I've just changed that, but I forgot to say, also you might add, just wipe the nozzle down a little bit with some tissue. It's probably a little bit burnt now. I like to just have a clean nozzle because it's gonna run into stuff. I've noticed I can move the head as well. But all right, 
here, here up nozzle, we're at 250, that's fine. We're gonna have to now whack it to move material until it comes out basically. So, and as soon as it starts coming out, it's a race to start printing. There you go, it's coming out. Now I have to quickly go back to return, return, print, and click back, let it quickly cycle through all the stuff and kick off the print as soon as possible. No file found, what? That's what happens if you don't prepare, I guess. For God's sakes. One, 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 one. There you go. Unfortunately, I was a bit slow. You can see the, the bit coming out the end here. Um, what you might get is a little air gap here. And because if this period here takes too long, while this is cooled, the, the coupler has caused a lump to start there and no material will come out. But luckily, I'm in luck, material is coming out. And it should be alright now. And I haven't calibrated this in about four or five weeks now. So um, hopefully it should be alright. And that's it. That's the face that you saw in my eyes starting to get printed. That wasn't too bad. Hopefully in under six minutes as well. Don't worry if these lines as well aren't perfect. Um, sometimes you can go a bit close, so don't worry about it. And, and don't worry about the undersides. I went on about how, don't worry, you know, it's just plastic, blah, blah, blah. But um, yeah, you don't need to worry about stuff you won't see. So, you know, if you have spiky stuff on your object, don't worry about it. And now it's doing those little bases. And that's that. So 